Okay, example four, graph y is equal to x squared plus c. Example four, very similar to example three, except that in example four, the c value is negative, whereas in example three, the c value was positive. Okay, we're going to graph it, and then we got to compare the graph with the graph on y is equal to x squared. Once again, x squared should be no problem. All right. And to graph y is equal to 1 half x squared minus 4, we, we plug in values that are going to be easily divisible by 2. So in this case, we're just using even numbers, 0, 2, and 4, and of course, the negative side, negative 2 and negative 4. Once we plug in, we determine our values for y, 4, negative 2, negative 4, negative 2, and 4. From there, we plot these points. That are on the table, we plot these onto our graph. And you can see here where each point has been plotted. Okay. As usual, we draw a smooth curve through the points. You see where they draw a smooth curve through the points. And then in step four, we're going to compare. All right, notice both graphs open up and have the same axis of symmetry, x is equal to zero. Open upward, vertex is a minimum. Open upward, vertex is a minimum. However, the graph of y is equal to 1 half x squared minus 4 is wider and has a lower vertex than the graph of y is equal to x squared. Because the graph of y is equal to 1 half x squared minus 4 is a vertical shrink and a vertical translation of y is equal to x squared. Okay, that's just fancy terminology to say the following. The same thing we've been saying in examples 1, 2, and 3. And that is, the smaller the a value, here a is 1, here a is 1 half, the smaller the a value, the wider the graph. Smaller a value, the wider the graph. Here, we have that our C value was a negative 4. So that means the graph is going to come down 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? So now once again, we have a shrinkage. Here is 1. Here is 1 half. So we know, actually I said that wrong. When they say, when they say shrink, they're referring to the fact that it's going down 4 units. But here, going from here to here, we know that it's going to get larger because the A value is smaller. The smaller the A value, the wider the graph. And once again, vertical shrinkage, also called a vertical translation, downward in this case, four units. One, two, three, four. Example five, standardized test practice. How would the graph of the function y equals x squared plus 6 be affected if the function were changed to y is equal to x squared plus 2. A, the graph would shift 2 units up. B, the graph would shift 4 units up. C, the graph would shift 4 units down. Or D, the graph would shift 4 units to the left. Solution, the vertex of y equals x squared plus 6 is 6 units below the origin, or 0, 6. The vertex of the graph of y equals x squared plus 2 is 2 units above the origin, or 0, 2. Moving the vertex from 0, 6 to 0, 2 translates the graph 4 units down. The correct answer is C. Example 6. Use a graph. Solar energy. A solar trough has a reflective parabolic surface that is used to collect solar energy. The sun rays are reflected from the surface towards a pipe that carries water. The heated water produces steam that is used to produce electricity. The graph of the function y equals 0 0.09 times x models the cross section of the reflective surface where x and y are measured in meters. 
use the graph to find the domain and range of the function in this situation. Solution. Step 1. Find the domain in the graph. The reflective surface extends 5 meters on either side of the origin. So the domain is x is greater than or equal to a negative 5 and x is less than or equal to 5. All right, they simply did that by going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's as far as it goes on x. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the negative side. So x is greater than or equal to a negative 5 and x is less than or equal to 5. Okay, now, now that we know the domain, we're going to use that to find the range. Find the range using the fact that the lowest point on the reflective surface is 0, 0. And the highest point occurs, or the highest y value occurs, when x is equal to 5 or x is equal to a negative 5. So we're going to substitute 5 for x and then simplify. So we get y is equal to point zero nine times 5 squared, and that's going to equal to 2.25. So the range is y is greater than or equal to 0, or y is less than or equal to 2.25. Okay, now we could have also analyzed the graph itself to find the range. You can use the graph to estimate the range of the function. The lowest point is at the origin, 0, 0. The two higher points are just above the line. Y is equal to 2. So right here is Y is equal to 2. And you see it's just above that 2. In this case, the negative 2. It is just above the 2. No, nope, excuse me. It's above the 2 period because that's Y is equal to 2, not negative. Y is equal to 2. So it's just above that 2, just above that 2. So an estimate of the range would have been y is greater than or equal to 0, or y is less than or equal to 2. That would be an estimate. But the exact figure would have been y is greater than or equal to 0, and y is less than or equal to 2.25. Okay, that concludes our lesson, so let's get started with the assignment.